Welcome here. In this video tutorial, I show you how to do two advanced room transitions in Game Maker Studio. One where you simply have to move a big black box in and out, and the other a Super Mario World style where you are about to leave a level. This video is a continuation of the last basics video of transitions. So if you are unsure about the code here and you don't know how surfaces work, well, I got you covered. Links in the description below. This is one up Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and the programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every two days a video. Let's get into the good stuff. So how does this basically work? First of all, we're gonna do the black side in and out and then the surface out. The other two are already I have discussed in the previous video on basics. And these two new ones are a little bit more difficult. I will just go directly into the code so you see what's going on. There's not so much changes in here. So just recapitulate it. Once again we have to get our center of our room because we want to draw on the draw GUI. And that we get with the middle or the width of the application surface or our display, which is in my camera system the same. And we just get those value, take it by half and we got the middle position. Here we have again a move and an alpha and they are bound to a timer. And then um, after the timer runs out, we start moving our things. And well, what do we move? Basically just this rectangle um, which you have here and there we just set it to uh, four times of our width so basically just our rectangle will be just sitting here and waiting and doing nothing i did it two times bigger than i needed so i have some buffer when it moves a little bit over here and well the height um, didn't change because it's already full screen so for the highest thing and I don't have to change it here. And here the important part is the move because for now, without the move, it would be just sitting here and doing nothing, which we don't want. So we just let our timer run out and then we move it 90 pixels. And I put in a second timer. Um, so um, we will reset the first timer. Why do I do that? Because I don't want it to just to go and just to go out because that would be silly we wanted to stop it at a specific time so I have to dabble with the timer and then I set it about 50 and for example if we put it into our room now you will see that it does work and it just basically goes from left to right just waits for the timer goes in and stops and everything is black and I put in an additional destroy timer so after the destroy timer runs down in the step event it destroys itself. It, it, you don't have to do that because um, once the room is being changed, you don't need that. But for example, if you do it as a transition in, if you enter the room and that's the first thing which is running, then it is a good thing to have a destroy timeline so uh, you don't have this transition thing running around and well, just uh, this would loop all the time at some point and that's a thing you don't want to have. So this is how it works. Pretty easy code and the same thing we do for our side in. And this is basically almost the same code, same rectangle plus move. And here we um, start with the rectangle on the middle position of our screen because as I give it the snatch width and snatch height. And in the step event, we say, all right, we want to move it to the right. That's why we go for 90 plus. Of course, we could show that a little bit slower, but 90, I guess it's quite good. So for example, we could go put it in here. Oh, I guess it is, put it in here. And um, for example, we could do, let's say, 60 or 70 as our second timer and you would see that it 
goes over, which we don't want. And you see, it just stops at this point. We don't want that. That's why um, when you do that kind of thing, well, you have to calibrate it for your game. But here it works perfectly fine. And it will adapt to the biggest screen, which is the 25 by 60 width and with smaller monitors as well. So this is how you would do the side or a slide in black box. And now we come to the more interesting part, the one we do with the surfaces. This is a little bit more complicated, but again, we just snatch our two values. We take a scale and an alpha. And these two things, well, the scale is being put in. And after we reach a specific scale, we want to exit to the next room. So basically what you would be seeing is we have a huge black box, which is just filling the whole black screen. But because we don't want to start with the black screen, we want it to be, well, everything visible. And then we just narrow it down until, well, the middle point. And that we do this time, not with, um, well, we used last time uh, this shape. We do it with a completely round shape, which is 512 pixels. But you can do it with a different shape if you like, but I don't know. I prefer to do it with bigger shapes, then just scale it up and down. So it looks a little bit smoother. And let's go back into our transition. So what it does, it goes for um, a black screen, which I put in here, and it would be completely black, but the round shape is bigger than the whole screen. And that's why it does a negative um, additive blending. And so it is, well, everything is visible. Then it goes smaller, 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 smaller. And then we just have everything black and just the small um, shape, which is just staying in here. And because this is our first surface out, it will just go for an almost very, very small value. And then it just exits the room. And let's put it in so we can see how it does look like. And that's what it does. And then it just exits the room. So how is this code in practice? Basically, as I told you, like um, we just run down the first timer as usual. Then we set the alpha of one and then just reduce our scale. And if it is a very small scale, just well go to the next room. And here we just do all the magic. Basically what we do, we, we do a surface check then we say, all right, we want our surface to set a target. Then we do the drawing and then we just reset and then we just draw the whole surface. And the negative version would be, all right, there's no surface because we always have to check is the surface there. If not, we create the surface, which I call a surface transition. And I initialized it with zero one, so it doesn't exist in the first step. And then it will be created here. And here I just go for our complete display width and display height. So it would be covering the whole screen every time. Here, of course, you have to put in, um, if you're not using my camera system, if you're using something else, well, your application surface, your, or your display width, which you're using in here for the width and the height, which you're using. And then, well, after we created it, we set the target. And then we just reset it, which we do here as well. Set the target, reset it. And in this part, we just do the draw. This is pretty simple. As I told you before, we do, first of all, a completely black um, rectangle, which is just filling the whole screen with a 40 by 25. If you watched my last video, you know what these kind of numbers mean. But basically, just is the 64 by 64 pixels rectangle times 40 times 25 and this is just filling the whole screen and that's that's basically it and then we do um, a blend mode we just subtract something which is our round clear and that was well 
this image and and it is for now extremely huge because well we put it on a scale of 25 which is well, quite big and then we just scale it down in our step event and then what you will be seeing is just drawing our rectangle and subtracting our round shape from it and then we just have to reset our blend mode because we don't want it to subtract all the time and then well it just runs down and this is it and again we can do the negative version of this one in our um, clear in so um, our negative version where um, we just start with a black room and expand it um, um, differently so what do we do first of all we just have our rectangle this is the the other version for example if you are entering the room everything is black so we have this um, black rectangle and here we just again subtract the whole thing but the scale is very very small so as you can see it's, it starts with the extremely small scale and it just um, increases in this step event and once it in increases um, a lot well we could say and go for if clause if uh, scale is bigger than let's say 25 because that was the scale i used for the other thing we want our instance to be destroyed in come on destroy this is how it could look like well that's the whole thing nothing special basically the same code target drawing and well resetting and of course if it doesn't exist do the whole shabam in the other transition and now maybe you want to say okay i don't want to put in the middle i just want like for example um, to do the the negative drawing over here because you want to expand the round shape from this point this is pretty easily done you just go and change the subtraction um, shape and just don't go for for example your mid width and your mid height of your screen but just go i don't know 200 by 200 or whatever you want to use and then it will just start to subtracting from this point and this of course works as well and well let's go into the last thing which you've seen in the very beginning so you just have like um, this uh, round shape coming in and then it's stopping for a short time and then it just continues and just goes to the other room this is basically like the first um, the surface out but for now we do a few things differently we have a second timer which is just blocking um, and we have a phase so for example if we go into this code for the step event we need to do a few things more first of all we say we are in our phase and for example once we hit a scale of 1.8 which would be like i don't know this kind of shape we say all right we enter phase two and once we are in a phase two the scale is not going down so we have then our second timer so we just wait a little bit and once the second timer runs down as well we'll say all right let's go to phase three and then we just decrease our scale again and then if our scale is really really small we just exit the room and then we we'll have this nice little effect which i showed you and i have put it and i did put it in into um our go to next room thing and here for example you have to well, just create the instance and don't do it just like okay we have a collision and we create the instance and every step we create one surface that would be pretty much well not crashing your game but slowing it down significantly because you're creating 60 surfaces a second which is quite a lot and you don't want that so I just used like a, a sort of a switch variable I say create once and once 
And if it says, okay, it is false, just set it to true. And then it just does it once. We create once our object surface too, which is doing that with the weighting. And then we are pretty much fine. And what else? Um, that's basically it. We just, the whole code, draw GUI code stays the same. What we just do here is just cut down our scale into well, two phases, the first phase, the third phase, where you just well cut it down to specific proportions, change them at your will. And then, for example, when the player is entering a sort of middle position, because this is how I centered it, um, you can do it as you please, and the player would just touch it, then it triggers it, and then it just creates our object surface. Yep. And this is how it works. And one last thing is, when you are leaving your room and you don't need your surface, always destroy um, and free your surface. So, for example, um, once this being triggered, it will just go through the its last step, so the room end step, and then it will destroy itself. Because um, if you wouldn't be doing that, the surface would be still lingering around in your memory. That is something which you don't want. Hopefully that was something you can use for your own game. Have a good one. One up indeed.